Hey everybody, I'm Cliff, N4CCB. In my last video, I showed how I transmitted to a station 250 miles away. I recorded that station's audio and video. Uh, it's a web SDR station. That video triggered some folks. Uh, I got all kinds of, I don't say nasty comments. My favorite comment was a guy that said, cool story, bro. Cool story, bro. Um, some people said, well, you know, what you just showed was like a best case scenario. Well, yeah, kind of. I mean, I'm not going to, I'm not going to argue that really. I could have picked a time or a station where the conditions were even more favorable. And so my, my hundred watt signal could have been stronger, which would have let my one watt signal be stronger, right? But, you know, point taken, I did, do, I did do this test with sideband. I had a bunch of people that were like, try that with sideband. That might have been the cool story bro guy might have, might have also asked me to do it with sideband. And I did. So same station, I transmitted uh, with my voice with sideband. And when I asked if the frequency is in use, a ham, I believe it was in Arkansas, said they were about to have a net but that I could use the frequency for a few minutes if I wanted to, and I did. And he was a great ham, his name's Brian, and he, he gave me some feedback on my audio. Now, I was recording the screen and audio in Georgia. He was in, I think, Arkansas. So what he was hearing was not the same thing that Georgia was hearing. Uh, but I've got the video of that and the audio, and I'm gonna show it to you right now that we're gonna talk about that. So let's do that. Hey, uh, Whiskey Zulu 5 uh, Delta X-ray. Yeah, the frequency is in use. Uh, we, we're, we're a little on the hiatus here, but we'll, uh, we're going to start uh, uh, a net here in about 15, uh, 20, maybe, no, more like 30 minutes. So if you wanted to put out calls until uh, then, we, we would yield, Roger. Roger, Roger. Uh, would you mind if I did an audio test for about 90 seconds? Oh, not at all. I'll give you feedback, too. Excellent. Okay, I'm going to try transmitting to the 100 watts and then going down uh, further, recording this remotely, and I'm just going to hear at what point my uh, audio is in the noise floor. Roger? Oh, Roger, Roger. P please proceed. Okay, thank you, sir. So this is November 4, Charlie, Charlie Bravo, transmitting to the 100 watts. Started out strong at 100 watts. There was some QSB in there. Then to save time, I trimmed it down to 10 watts and lower. Uh, he heard me when I went to five watts and he thought he heard me say one watt, which is true. I, I went down to one watt. But he lost me after I went below five watts. Something that we all need to bear in mind though uh, in this on this QRP school YouTube channel is QRP requires favorable conditions, okay? Um, but you know what? Ham radio requires favorable conditions. Let's say that you got a brand new neighbor and he sees your antennas in the backyard and he walks over and says, Hey, what's all that? You know? And, uh, and you say, well, it's an amateur radio. And he's like, Oh, you mean like shortwave radio? Like, can you talk to people around the world on that thing? 
And you say, knowing that you're kind of telling a little white lie here, yeah, yeah, I sure can. And the guy says, okay, great. Well, I've got a college roommate who's in Tasmania. Can we go in your house right now and talk to somebody in Tasmania? And then you're like, oh, no, this guy thinks I can talk to Tasmania. I've never talked to Tasmania, and I don't know if the conditions are good today. Well, maybe. It doesn't, it's possible, but I'm not sure. Right. Because it requires favorable conditions. If you've got a 1500 watt amp and a multi-element beam, and you point that thing at Tasmania right now, you probably can't talk to Tasmania. I mean, you can at times, right? There are times, there are days, but it's, it's not a given, it, it's unreliable. So we're just kind of uh, at the whims of the gods of propagation. You never know on any given day where you can talk and where you can't talk. It requires, you know, the ionosphere to cooperate. There are things like maximum usable frequency that come into play. Uh, you know, the D layer, the E layer, you know, there, there are things that you learned when you got your ham license about propagation that come into play here. Just because you've got high power doesn't mean that you can just talk to anybody you want anywhere you want. Yes, you can talk to Ohio right now. 24 hours a day, you can find a band and talk to somebody in Ohio. But Slovenia, Sri Lanka, Japan, right now, maybe not. And I'll say probably not, right? And yet, even with low power, there are times when you are favored by the gods and things open up and you can make contacts long distance. You may have seen my video where I talked to a ham in Oregon on 500 milliwatts. And now 1.0, 1.0, and now one half a watt, 0.5 watts. Uh, can you hear me at all, Harold? Uh, I'm just urging you to 0.5 watts, 0.5 watts, over. Oh, uh, that's great. Point all right, so could I do that right now? Could I flip my radio on, put it down to a half a watt, and talk to that same ham in Oregon? I'm gonna, I'm gonna guess that I can not, cannot. That was a special time. Now those special times come fairly frequently, uh, frequently enough that it's, that it's fun to, to play ham radio. It's not just all uh, uh, failure when you work QRP. There's somebody you can talk to right now with QRP, I promise you. Uh, so, you know, people that have these comments that are like, that's not a real world scenario. Well, yes, it was real world. I was here in my real world. I transmitted 100 watts to a real world station that's 250 miles away. And what you heard is exactly what I sounded like. And as I turned it down, I sounded like that. Okay. So no, it's not making multiple hops across the ocean. Uh, didn't try that. Uh, however, uh, if you saw my video uh, about making uh, contacts during a, uh, a contest, I made 11 contacts using, well, it's not within reach, but a little, a little um, mountain topper radio uh, with an 11, excuse me, 11 volt battery. I think I was putting out about maybe two and a half, three watts. And of the 11 stations that I videoed me contacting, eight of them were 5,000 plus miles away. Okay, could I go out right now and and contact eight out of eleven stations that are five thousand miles away? I'm guessing that I can not, cannot, can't do that. That was a special day. It was during a contest, and propagation was good. That day, I bet you I couldn't have contacted eight stations in Australia or anybody in Australia for that matter. Propagation was good from here to to Eastern Europe. So um, QRP requires favorable conditions, more favorable than QRO, okay? If your signal is barely getting into some location at 100 watts, flipping on that amplifier to 1500 watts is gonna get you an extra couple of S units, you're gonna be above the noise floor, you're gonna be able to make that contact. But then there are other places where flipping on that amplifier will not get you there. That's not enough. Propagation's terrible between you and them. Or you're just on an edge case and 1500 watts, they may barely hear you in the noise floor 
and you can't go more than 1500 watts legally anyway. So we're kind of at the whim uh, of, of the gods of propagation. Uh, so I think that's it. I guess one thing I want to leave you with, if you're not familiar with it, there, and I should make a video about this really, there's a series of beacons around the world that are transmitting 24 hours a day. They transmit their call sign, and then they transmit four beeps, 100 watt beep, 10 watt beep, one watt beep, and 100 milliwatts. So if you sit there, and, and, and by the way, these are on 20 meters, 17 meters, 15 meters, 12 meters, and 10 meters. And the way it works is there's a, there's a bunch of these stations. So there's one at, at, in New York. It transmits on 20 meters, does its thing, and then it switches up to 17, does its thing, 15, 12, 10. Meanwhile, the next, the next station, the next beacon has started transmitting. And so constantly, and, and there's a web page, I'm going to tell you what that is here. If you go to that web page, you'll see who's transmitting right now and on what frequency. So on 20 meters, it's 14.110, uh, I believe, no, 100. Uh, 17 meters is 18.110. Anyway, if you go park on that frequency, 14.100, and you listen for a few minutes, you're gonna hear this round robin beacon thing. And it's possible that the only thing you can hear right now is New York, or maybe you'll hear Venezuela, but not New York, right? So you can listen to that. So I'm gonna play you what New York sounded like yesterday when I recorded this so that you can hear what that New York call sign and the 100 watt beep, 10 watt beep, one watt beep, and 100 milliwatt beep sounded like. Let's roll that. Okay, that was a strong 100 watt signal to New York. That means that I could easily have worked New York yesterday QRP at one watt even, right? You could hear the one watt beep. You certainly heard the 10 watt beep loud and clear, but you could also hear the one watt beep if you listen carefully, maybe not 100 milliwatts. But uh, anyway, that's a great resource for just listening to see uh, if any of these locations around the world are open right now. I don't know. Uh, I think I've said everything I wanted to say. I've probably said more than I should have said. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm not trying to convert people with amplifiers into QRP uh, weirdos, okay? Yes, I'm a QRP weirdo. I just like that. I like small battery-powered radios and a wire in a tree and seeing what I can do with very low power. That's just fun to me. It's always been fun to me. Um, but it might not be your thing, and that's cool. That's fine, do what you wanna do. Um, but don't, don't put comments out there that say, no, you can't do that, or no, that doesn't work, or that's not real world, or whatever. Because good Lord, the internet is full of YouTube videos of people working DXQRP. Uh, and as I said, the only reason you haven't done it is because you haven't tried it. Doesn't require any special skills. It might require some faith, faith that your signal is going to be strong somewhere. Just give it a try. That's not always going to work, and that's okay. All right, that's it for this one. I'll see you later.